name of Jesus. Because you people easily blame the PA people all the time. You don't realise how difficult a job it really, really is. Sajjit, you're marvellous. Thank you. Bless you. Sajjit, sorry. Um, could you... Um, it's actually warm. Can I have a cold one, please? <laughs> it's not quite appropriate. Thank you. Cold, right? Yeah, I said cold. You didn't run the tap cold enough. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> There, you're right, Martin, there is no pleasing some people. <laughs> you're absolutely right. So, uh, yesterday, um, the, uh, the, the ground uh, in... Uh, uh, Joy said to me during the week, she goes, uh, Joy being my wife, if you, you don't know who she is, um, she said, uh, I'd like us to... Got a cherry tree, that I, a cherry blossom tree that I, I, I want us to train and grow. So we've had these sort of, you know, you know the thin cane type sticks, you know? So we've had sort of a grid of them uh, 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 sort of helping while it was a young sapling and things are trained to it. And what you do is you tie and it, it makes the tree grow to a certain level, yeah? So anyway, it, it's, out, it's outgrowing itself and its stem is getting quite, uh, its trunk is getting quite chunky. So Joy had been saying, I, I'd like us to... Um, she says, put a, a, you know, a met post in, into the ground, and then a big, thick, square post like this, and then we can tie it to that and, and make it stronger as it goes, yeah? You with me so far? So I said, absolutely great idea, darling. We'll get a met post. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so she went off on Friday, and I said, the best way to get the met post, I said, is, is one, well, we'll do it this time of year because the ground's well saturated. And it's, oh, Sajajit, that's absolutely, let's just test that, shall we? Yeah, no, that's hot. No, I've asked for cold water, but what you gave me earlier was lukewarm. Would you, would you mind giving me cold water, please? I'm going hot. Thank you, Sajajit. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like some cold water. Bless you. Thank you. So, um, let, let's forget the humour of the wanting a simple glass of cold water. You may be thinking I'm being a little bit fussy, but I like cold water and I need my throat to, to, to be relaxed. So, so this Met Post, I said, yeah, get the Met Post. Best time of the year is when the ground is completely saturated and, and the Met Post should be able to go in a lot easier. So she goes, yeah. So in my head, Met Post, now anybody, Met Post what means metal post, by the way, sorry. So do you, know, you ever seen a metal post, a Met Post? Yeah, it's the square thing with a spike on it. So, now you can get them in varying degrees of sizes. You can go from sort of a stubby one, and you go sort of mid-range, and then you go to incredibly long, which comes to about here, and it's a massively long spike. So, of course, I'm imagining the stubby one. Which one do you think Joy got? The big one with the incredibly long spike. And uh, so I said, fine, so she gave it to me. And I, I'm, so yesterday morning, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm thinking, Right, so it's about 10 o'clock, I'm going to put this into the ground and we're going to do it. Well, you can imagine, I'm sitting there thinking, right, going to need the met post uh, block and a hammer, start really hammering this thing in. You can imagine what was going on. So I got the met post, stuck it over the ground and then went... <laughs> Whoa, this is so cool! And it was about that far off the ground from its last little knockings. And I'm glad to say I'm not that heavy, so I couldn't sit on it, it wouldn't move. And Sajajit, again, thank you, <laughs> bless you. Is it fine now? Perfect. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. <laughs> so, uh, um, sticking the Met Post into the ground, went in and then got the thing and hammered it the last little bit, and I thought, wow. And then this morning I sat and I was talking about this to, to, to Elizabeth and I said, I said, it feels like that's us. Because the ground was well saturated with water, it was ready to receive quite easily the Met Post. Yeah? And it just went in so easy. There was no argument. There was no resistance. It was just like, yeah, yeah, I'll take the Met Post in. It's cool. And that can be like us. Sometimes we need to be saturated. The ground, I don't know if you notice with ground, it doesn't move a lot. 
It doesn't agonize over whether it should take the rain. It doesn't sit there going, oh, I'm not sure if the rain's going to fall on me today when there's a whopping great cloud outside and it's about to open up. I don't know if you noticed, but ground doesn't sit there fervently praying, Lord, Lord, soak me. When it rains, the ground just goes, okay, I'll just sit here and take it. We tend not to do that. We spend half our time agonizing whether God's actually blessing us or not. Are we going to be filled with the Spirit today? Is God actually here? But when we spend time with God and we're saturated in his presence, we receive everything from him so much easier. I want you to rest with that for just a minute. I'm going to read a uh, psalm to you. Now, um, actually, uh, somebody's already read one verse from it already today, and I think that was charity. Psalm 103. Let all that I am... Can we have it... Sorry, to me. It's actually... Could you stick it up there, please? Thank you. Sorry to be a pain. I'll take a gulp of this very nice cold water while I'm... Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases... He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, Like wild flowers, we bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. I've got to say, when you read that its entirety, that psalm really goes, whoom! You can't go, but whoa, that's exciting. His unfailing love. He's slow to anger. He does not deal with us as harshly as our sins deserve. Because of his great mercy and his love. Just to clarify, it 
talks twice there about those who fear the Lord. Now, the problem is we take the English word fear and it ends us up into a quivering bubble on the floor somewhere and we think that's what we mean by fear. Fear, when you fear the Lord, it's about recognising who he is. It's about the awe of him. Does that make sense? It's a fearful awe. It's like, I suppose, you. some of us, we, we might have a movie star that we like or a sport excuse me, or a sports star that we really like. And should you ever, ever meet them face to face, you would be somewhat slightly in awe of them. Do you know what I mean? You would be a little bit, what what would I say to them? (laughs) They're being really nice and, oh, hi, nice to meet you. But you're like, "Ah." it's like meeting Her Majesty the Queen. I think most of us would be just a little bit, Hi, Majesty, I have no idea what... Normally you'll be like, hi, as again, Lizzie. But, um, but most of us would be quaking somewhere slightly in our boots because we're not quite sure how to connect with them. Do you know what I mean? So you would be because you recognise the authority, say, that she carries or the star that you really like to meet. They sort of carry a sort of a sense of authority towards you. You hadn't quite... And so you would be sort of in awe of them. So a fear of them. That's, that's the same imagery that's in this psalm about with God. So that psalm just says everything about his angels who he commands to look after and commit and do his work. His unfailing love, the fact he rules from the heavens above and he also rules here on the earth below. It's a psalm that should get our juices flowing. a psalm that should get our attention. I'm, I'm going to have to say this. I'm, this is really kicking around in my head. I'm going to have to say this. There are some of you that have come this morning, um, and you probably think you've actually come of your own volition. You, you've come, why do I even try and use big words? Um, you, you think you've come in your own esteem. Um, I'm actually really, really excited deep in my gut, because I've actually been praying and thinking about you this morning, all this week, and you're here. God wants to get your attention. I'll just throw that out there. So, uh, the, psalm that, uh, the, the sermon I had this morning has been completely thrown out. So, let's talk about that psalm and this picture. Can you, can you, Martin, I'm going to describe the picture in a moment, but if I could just allow people just to look at it just for a second, then I'll describe it. Is that okay, mate? Thank you very much indeed. Can we all see that okay? If you can't, move, come closer. See, there's a rule. Don't sit right at the back of the church. You can't see as clearly. So if you want to come closer to look at it, please do so for a minute. Sajidjit, could you do me a favour? Um, that glass of water is sort of not suiting me anymore. Could you get me another cold water? But um, No, no, I don't want it in that glass. Can I have it in a, a cup? Uh, one of the brown cups, please. That, that would suit me much better. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, okay, I, I think cold. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. <laughs> Just to let you know, everybody, that uh, last week the members of the church unanimously uh, agreed to send Sajajit to start the process to become a fully accredited Baptist minister. He's now learning servanthood. <laughs> so, to describe for Martin the, the, the picture, um, basically there is a picture hanging on a wall that you see some of the brick in the top right-hand corner, and then you see cracked well, you see plaster partly, so basically plaster has fallen off and you're seeing the bare wall. What is hanging, uh, the picture that's sort of hanging on it, uh, the picture is of like trees and a lake and the moon reflecting in the lake and it's all green and it's all very, very lovely. The wall clearly is a bit dilapidated and scraggy. And over all of that, the, both the picture and partially the wall is a, a cobwebs, a couple of cobwebs and a spider dangling. Is that all right? Cool, wonderful. 
So, oh, it's absolutely tragic. Bless you. Thank you ever so much. Yeah, that's much better. Thank you. That suits my needs right now. Thank you. <laughs> so, I looked at this picture this morning. I walked in on it. I assumed it came. I know it's come from Sheba um, because um, it was from the art evening last night. Uh, what made me laugh was Sheba came up to me just before I about to start the sermon. She goes, I'd like to explain the picture to everybody. I said, don't bother. I'm using it as the sermon. <laughs> Why explain something that God can explain for each of us ourselves? God always likes to get our attention, doesn't he? Yes. And I think this is one of those days that God is trying to get our attention. Um, I don't know, have you ever tried to get somebody's attention and they just ignore you completely? You ever been in a car and as you've driven up to the Polish roundabout, you know the Polish War Memorial roundabout? So you imagine this was yesterday, morn, um, yesterday afternoon, circa, what time did, um, what time did we leave Westway? Uh, it must have been sort of one o'clock-ish. So you're going up the Polish to the top of the Polish roundabout, and you're sitting up there, and you're sitting in your car, and you've seen way, way off in the rearview mirror of the distance a car of somebody you know because you recognise the car instantly because it's one of those cars you don't normally see on the road. That you know their reg instantly because you've known it for years. And as they come down off the target roundabout, they slip on down the A4, and you think, I know who that is. I want to get their attention. And then they come off and you say, oh, great. Then. And they come up beside you and they sat right beside you. And so you're sitting there and you're tooting your own trying to get their attention. And they're turning right, clearly going on their way to rice slip. And so the entire time they're sat in their car and their head is turned looking to the right. And you're tooting that on, and you're thinking, I'm tooting this on loud enough, and I've got me window down, and I've got Joy next to me, and I'm going, we can't get this person's attention. They said, they're ignoring you completely. I said, I can tell. Now, you don't know if they've got music blasting in their car, and they can't hear you tooting, but I'm sitting there, and I'm giving it, and I haven't got a small, you know, my car's not got a low ho hooter, but you're tooting like crazy about one o'clock-ish as they're turning right to go towards where I slip, Nikki. <laughs> Nice to see you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You must have tweeted. No? I'm sitting there. <laughs> Mercedes Benz have too much insulation. Right, so, so you know when God's trying to get your attention? It's so easy, isn't it, to black him out, to block, to, to mask him, to completely ignore him? This felt like this for this picture for me. This greenery, these trees, this lake, that's God's promise. God's promise to bring peace, rest, his unfailing love. It's a place that you can go to and get to very, very easily. The problem is, is that, and I don't see this as like a picture hanging on the wall. I actually saw this when I saw this today as a doorway through the wall. Does that make sense? The problem is, is that we've built the wall in our lives, that we're blocking out God. Some of us this morning have blocked out the Lord. We've, we've stuck this brick wall up, and so therefore then we're blind to what's going on on the other side. And God's trying to show us a glimmer of it right now in this picture. He's trying to say, look what's this side. Stop putting a wall up between you and me. Look what's this side. Just leave that to settle with you just for a minute.
The wall actually can be a representation of how you think God thinks about you. You've maybe not been spending as much time with the Lord as you know he likes to. Note the phrase, he likes to. And so what happens is we start building this wall in our mind and we start convincing ourselves the Lord doesn't want to be with us. The Lord actually doesn't like us anymore. All my sins have, have blocked off everything the Lord wants to do. But I want to take you back to that Psalm 103 that makes it very clear that he's actually sent his sins away from us as far as the east is from the west. Have you ever tried to go from the east to the west and try and catch up from the, to the west? Completely, you can't actually do it. It's not possible, by the way. Because the whole point is they're poles apart. And he says, and he said, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The problem is we, we forget that passage. When the Lord says, come and enter into my presence, come and spend time with me, we forget the fact that he's full of unfailing, note the phrase, unfailing love. But it's unfailing. Most things in this world fail. Cars break down, really annoying. But the Lord's unfailing love does not stop. Yet we somehow allow this brick wall to come up that blocks the view of that. Another thing I saw in this picture is the cobwebs. Felt like I believe God's saying that actually for some people, the cobwebs are that they've allowed their relationship with God to remain dormant. And what's happened is cobwebs have formed. I don't know about you, but cobwebs are really annoying. They form quite quickly if you don't clean. Yeah? If you don't clean quickly, you don't keep an eye on the small corners and the areas of your life. Cobwebs form really well. I don't know if you notice in this church building, cobwebs form very, very quickly. I, there are some, I haven't actually had it for ages, and I think it's because the heating is on all the time. But most mornings, I can guarantee there's a whole period of time where I walk into my office every morning, and there is a cobweb right across the door as I walk in. Face full of web, really lovely. Imagine if I had long hair. Man, I'd be annoyed. But the cobwebs, we allow to form... And grow in the places. And actually that proves that there is, we've allowed things to go dormant. We've allowed things to go completely dormant. We've allowed our relationship with the Lord to go completely dormant. We've not sprung clean it. Now, when we use the phrase spring clean, I think we, we tend to think that that means something along the lines of, I must scrub it all myself. Well, there's an element of responsibility we have with our relationship with God. But I think for some of us, we've allowed it to go dormant and we've allowed cobwebs to form. So then it masks the whole picture here. It masks what the beauty of what God's got in store for his people, for those who love him. Just take a moment, sit with God just for a minute over those imageries and see if God's talking to you through it. Let's take that moment now.
So here's an antidote. Psalm 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Let's just just rest it there for a minute. I found myself this morning in a fairly sort of like... I mean, I was enthusiastic for coming this morning. Then I got in. You know when you get a moment where you just think, I'm not sure, I feel a little bit like... To use a phrase somebody else used, a bit numb this morning. Does that make sense? I'm sort of, uh, uh, I don't know what to do. And then I thought, actually, let's just start praising the Lord. Let's start thanking him for all the good things he's done. And that suddenly stirred something. That, that sort of reminds you of everything. And I think we forget to do that. We forget, we get, when we allow the cobwebs to come in or we build up a wall or whatever else. I'm going to move this picture now because I'm going to do some damage. I can see that happening. And it's a lovely picture, isn't it? I'll just move it over one side for a minute. But when I, when I look at that and I think, you know, the antidote is praise the Lord. Remember the good things that he has done for you. Now, Andy had us doing that earlier on. I had no idea what Andy was doing this morning. But he had that doing that for us. He had us remembering the good things that God has done for us. Amen? And it's very easy to sit here and go, well, God's not done anything for me recently. Well, are you here this morning? So he gave you breath in your lungs. That's the basics. Without them, you're a little bit stuffed. <coughs> you was able to get here this morning. However you got here, you got here. Yes? If you walked, fantastic. If you drove, fantastic. If you was guided by a four-legged friend, fantastic. You got here. What's God not done for you so far this morning? Who's at breakfast? If you're not at breakfast, why not? <laughs> it's the main meal of the day. That's why by lunchtime or by near the end of this sermon, you get ratty. It's got nothing to do with the sermon. It's to do with the lack of nutrients in your body. People, are you going home for lunch? Are you getting lunch? Fine. See, there you go. God's doing things for you. What's there not to be thankful for? You got a roof over your head. Yes. Did Brentford win 5 0 yesterday? Yes. See, what does God not do for you? Martin, I'll, I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus right now. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. The church still can't get over the fact I love football now. So, um,. What's God not done for you so that you don't praise him and you don't thank him? When we do that, that's when we realize his tender mercies for us. That's when we realize that we can blow these cobwebs away and spring clean them out and remember who he is and what he has done for us. The problem is that we, we treat God like we treat stuff. Now, did you enjoy the whole water and that asking Sajajit to go and get me a, load, a whole load of water? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brings me... Now, Sajajit knew nothing of what I was going to ask him to do, by the way. How did you feel, Sajajit? And be really, really honest. How did you actually feel... And don't try and give me the pious Christianese answer. <laughs> Be honest, how did you actually feel that I actually sent you back four times to get me a proper glass of water? Be honest. Uh, I just felt normal because I know I'm someone who wants things the way I want it. So it's, it's okay for me if you send it ten times, if you want things. Really, great. Could you go and get me one in a clear glass, please? <laughs> of you think though when I kept sending him back do you think after a while I was being a bit selfish be honest yes. yeah do you think I was being a bit fussy you thought it was part of the talk yes. thanks Marla it was have I become that predictable <laughs> we're gonna have to change that aren't we but you thought I was being a bit selfish and self-centered weren't you where do you think we're gonna go with this folks 
Let's talk about consumerism, can we, just for a minute? Who likes things? When things break, what do you do with them? And be honest. We throw them out, don't we? Because they're no longer working. So therefore, then we go and get the new latest gadget that comes in. There used to be, years ago, people would make do and mend. They would repair it. They will make sure, they will persevere the thing and make sure it keeps going and going and going and going. But now we're in a very disposable society that says, ha, ah, throw away, let's get the new thing. Even when it isn't completely broken, we want to go, ah, ah, that's not the latest gadget, that doesn't look good, let's get rid of it, it doesn't suit my needs anymore. We can treat the Lord just like that. Suddenly, he's not suiting my needs. So then that's when the brick walls grow up. That's when the cobwebs come in. Because what's happening is we're not recognizing, you're right, I'm not suiting your needs, but I'm giving you what you need. You're just not recognizing it. So we can do that. We can sort of dispose of the Lord and go, oh, we could dispose of the church and go, do you know, I'm going to go to another church because this church is not suiting my needs. And yet we then said, Lord, your unfailing love. The Lord is unfailing. Amen. Amen. He is slow to anger. Amen. He does not deal with us as harshly as we deserve. I think the Lord is saying, please don't dispose of me so readily. <coughs> By the way, I just want to vouch for the fact that the water is incredibly lovely. And it's watering my insides incredibly well. Ask yourself the question, have you recently sort of, you come and get your fix on a Sunday morning from church and feel, yes, I'm going to change now, I'm going to move on, I'm going to do things differently, and the minute you walk out, you sort of dispose of God and then carry on for the rest of the week as you have done normally. And then you wonder why maybe when you come on a Sunday, you're not feeling the spirit. You're not feeling the worship. You feel a sense of disconnect from what everybody else seems to be doing. That's be consumerism, my brothers and sisters. Because you're coming in expecting that I've done what I've wanted to do all week and I expect somebody now to fix me. The worship to fix me. You expect God just to suddenly go, here you go, hello, I'm here. But when we first come in on Sunday morning, we have to sort of get rid of the cobwebs, knock down a hole in the wall till we finally see the green. You with me? Yeah. But the green's there and God keeps going, look, it's here all the time, seven days a week. Spend time with me. Don't, don't, don't let everything else get in the way. And I don't know about cobwebs, I don't, by the way, I know about my, my thing, but cobwebs have this habit, spiders have this habit of creating cobwebs over a long period of time. It takes them all night. Uh, we got a great one, we got a massive patio across the back of our garden, and we got this one spider, he has this ability to, from my shed, create a spider web that goes all the way across the patio and attach itself to the other side of the wall. It is amazing. Right, he spent, I know, he's amazing. I, I, he's big. I know, he is big. If you don't like spiders, don't come around. But he's great. <laughs> but he's able to create this. And unfortunately, sometimes with cobwebs, they can take time and we don't see them happening until we've walked right into them. We don't see the areas of our life that have become dormant until we walk right into it. And sometimes we might come into church. You might not have been to church for months on end. But then you walk in, you're thinking, why am I not 
feeding it? Well, that's because there's areas of your life that have become dormant. And they need to be like the ground in my garden. If you spend all week just allowing God to soak you, you receive stuff so much quicker. You won't have to walk through the cobwebs. You won't have to knock down massive brick walls to see what God has got in store for you. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Again, I want to say that fear is not about being in fear of his punishment, but it's fear about how wonderful and awesome he is. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers we bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever. His salvation extends to the children's children. All that I am, praise the Lord. morning for some of you this morning if not for virtually all of us this picture that psalm recognizing that we have allowed things to become dormant we've allowed cobwebs to grow in our lives where they shouldn't have been or we've actually put brick walls up so we do not recognize anymore the unfailing love of the Lord. It is masked, it is overshadowed, it has stopped us seeing exactly who he is. The Lord is saying, come on, come on my child. Let's clear the way here. Let's clear the way. Let's do it together. God is love. And his whole idea is that he wants to love you. That's all he does. He wants to love you. And he wants you to recognize that love. And he wants to operate in his love. But you can't do if you allow brick walls up or you allow the cobwebs in. This morning the Lord is saying... Come on. Together we'll clear this out. Together we'll break this down. But you've got to be like my garden. Saturated, soaked in water, soaked in him, allowing him to come down upon you. And then the cross of Christ, which is like my met post, can nicely slip in and you realise how forgiven you are and how loved you really are. Take a few moments and I'm gonna ask Andy to, and the musicians and singers to take over. But take a few moments with the Lord, because he loves you. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.